part of hearing Minnesotans. And I, I also happen to be hard of hearing myself. I am here along with our partners, the Minnesota Association of Deaf Citizens, Hearing Loss Association of American Minnesota Chapter, and the Minnesota Deaf Blind Association. We're all here to welcome you to our biannual Deaf, Hard of Hearing, and Deaf Blind Legislative Day. And we can all look around at all the accommodations that have been made here today. It reflects the diversity of the people that the commission represents. We use different modes of communications. Some of us are from different cultures as well. We are united in one thing, our commitment to advocating for equal opportunity for deaf, hard of hearing, and deaf blind people. MCDHH is a 15 member Governor appointed commission. We are committed to teaching the community how to advocate for themselves at the legislature and in their local communities. Having a day like today is one of the ways we hope to achieve this goal. Today we are here to rally support for our legislative agendas and work side by side with legislators to accomplish those goals. We are also here to recognize citizens who have played a critical role in helping us to achieve our goals. Equal access in education, employment, and services through civic education engage engagement and advocacy. Our bills this year include legislation that will continue to pay for accessible state websites, hardware and software, including funds for captioning for deaf and hard of hearing, and to preserve the specialized programs that provide communication access in mental health, education, employment, and human services that we have fought so hard to win. None of this happens without bipartisan support. At today's rally, members of both parties will show their support for our cause. I would like to now introduce my good friend, my former college roommate, my state senator, and the president of the Senate, Senator Michelle Fishback. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am really happy to be here today in the 25th year of the Commission for Deaf, Deaf, Blind, and Hard of Hearing Minnesotans. In this time of scarcity, it is important to focus on what is important to all of us. And little more is important, is so important as communication. I'm excited today to be uh, introduced by my college roommate. Imagine the two of us 27 years ago in one small dorm room with one phone and two Michelles. So it was, it was interesting to uh, room with Michelle and she taught me a lot. Some of it I can even talk about here today. <laughs> but she taught me a lot about hearing loss and she taught me about how much can be achieved with hard work and communication access. She is now a teacher for the deaf, of hard, deaf and hard of hearing. She serves on the research council for the deaf, resource council, excuse me, for the deaf and hard of hearing. And she is the chair of this organization, MCDHH. Hearing loss affects 10% of all Minnesotans. Children, teenagers, baby boomers, veterans, moms, dads, brothers, sisters, and friends. It is important that you communicate the success that you can, you can achieve when you have access to communication. In the past, you have done a great job making your case to the legislators, legislators here at the Capitol. And by the size of the crowd today, you are going to continue that tradition and make that case. I am here to continue to listen to the issues you support and the concerns that you have. It will be a difficult year for everyone given the $5 billion deficit the state faces. But issues of communication are important, and we will do our best to support the vital services and policy changes you have brought before us. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing your concerns with the legislators. 
And most of all, thank you for allowing me a few minutes of your time today. Good luck visiting with your legislators today. Thanks. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the rally. My name is Rich. Uh, closer to the microphone. My name is Rich Diedrichson, and I'm representing the Minnesota chapters of Hearing Loss Association of America. I became hard of hearing while I was serving in the Vietnam War in 1969 and 70. And please, somebody say, "Oh, you don't look that old." Uh, I am. Hearing loss is the most prevalent disability among all veterans of all wars. All the awards that we're going to be given today are very important. But what's more important is the civic engagement and involvement that is taking place here. Our vote and our ability to engage in the legislative process is fundamental and basic to the democratic process of government. Today, we are giving a word to the Legislative Coordinating Commission, the House Public Information Service, and the Senate Media Services for the work they have done in implementing real-time online captioning for all the floor session and for all the committee hearings for many years, hearing people have been able to access all of this information simply by viewing a web stream. But now, thanks to a new law that was passed in 2009 and for the funding given to the Legislative Coordinating Commission, we who have a hearing loss are able to participate on the same level. We want to recognize and thank Barry LaGrave, Greg Dubinger, Diane Henry, and Steve Senek, who were creative, diligent, and caring in their approach to making this happening. And now we can view all of the happens that affects us online. Accepting the award today, Representative Steve Gottwald, who happens to be my personal representative in the House, And Senator Ann Rest, Senator Rest is the chief author of the candidate captioning bill and the chief author of the Senate Accessive Technology Bill. Thank you very much to each of them. Well, it is a real delight to be here once again with you. One of the privileges I've had in, as a member of the Senate, has been to author that legislation, which has led to such increased access uh, for all of you to follow your government. The Senate received a $200,000, or the LCC gave a $200,000 uh, appropriation so that um, we could improve and update the services that come to you about the legislature. We continue in the Senate to explore new approaches for providing captioning. We want to uh, thank the Commission, uh, the Deaf, Deaf, Blind, and Hard of Hearing for this recognition. And I personally want to give kudos to Steve Senek uh, and the Senate Media Services for all the wonderful work that they have done and they've always been kind of ahead of the curve, not waiting for a mandate to do the right thing. So in the Senate we're just really delighted that that work has gone uh, on and we have appreciated and are very grateful for the uh, uh, advice and comments that we have received from the communities and from the Commission so that we can be more responsive to um, our constituents' needs. So we look forward
to continuing to work together to make all legislative proceedings available to all of our citizens. Thank you very much on behalf of Steve Senek and uh, the Senate Media Services. Uh, we are so grateful for the recognition. Thank you. Again, I'm State Representative Steve Gottwald, and I'm here today uh, to accept this award on behalf of the House of Representatives. We are very grateful for this recognition. Um, I think, as Senator Rest pointed out, we have a bipartisan, nonpartisan, and uh, uh, both houses commitment to making the proceedings of your state capital available to all Minnesotans, and I repeat, all Minnesotans. Accessibility to our government is a very high priority, and I want to thank Senator Rust and the others who authored this legislation that we just talked about, and just to know that we have that commitment. We appreciate you being here and advocating on behalf of the deaf, blind, deaf, the people who are are part of your organization, deserve our support, and they have it. We're ready to work with you in any way we can uh, to help create even greater accessibility to your state government. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for this award.
There was the death line boat ride and monitoring of captioning of candidate ads and making sure that the candidate forums were accessible. Thank you very much. I'm truly honored by the award, so thank you. And my husband, who has the camera over there with the red tie, we captioned our ads before the law required it to make sure that we could communicate with all citizens of Minnesota. And he hand captioned all the online ads himself this last time, and there were about eight ads. So thank you, honey. It's meetings like today where you and others came to this Capitol that made it possible to pass the laws and to get the funds that we made available to the groups. So you have to keep coming back to this beautiful building. You have to keep speaking out because we have not done enough. And you have to keep coming back and speaking out and never giving up because it's our children and their children whose lives we are shaping here today. Thank you for this recognition, but thank you for making Minnesota the state we say it is, the state we want it to be. Thank you. students are up there. My name is Diane Sherwood and I am the Director of Planning and Development at Metro Deaf School. I'm very honored to receive this award today on behalf of Metro Deaf School. I would like to thank MCDHH for helping us in training our parents and students and community members in lobbying efforts so we could get this bill passed, house file, 3329 has saved our school. The process of learning how to do it was invaluable and a great experience for everybody involved. I would also like to recognize and thank Senator Kathy Saltzman last year for authoring our bill and her support throughout the process made the success of the bill possible. And thank you to all the representatives and senators who voted unanimously to pass the bill on our behalf. We're here today because of everybody's efforts. Thank you. Prior to 2009, most state websites were not accessible to people who are deafblind and people who are deaf. That changed when legislation passed with the leadership of, of Representatives Westrom, Kahn, and Senator Vest that required that the state adopt and implement federal accessibility standards. 
All e-government services must be accessible for people with disabilities as without disabilities. Now all purchases of software, hardware, websites, videos, and documents must be accessible. The Department of Administration and the Office of Enterprise Technology took on these tasks with passion. They simply could not have done a better job. Three individuals stand out in this work. Rena Rogers, project manager from OET, Betsy Hayes of the Department of Administration, and Colleen Weck, and I apologize if I butchered a name here, who convened the first group four years ago to launch this process. Accepting the award today for OET is Commissioner Carol Parnell, and for the Department of Administration, Kim Moshe. Moshe. Thank you. Hello, just a word. Um, I cannot take credit for this award since I'm so new to the organization, but I can say that I'm delighted that OET made this a priority. Um, it is clearly um, an essential part of our mission, and I'm very proud to accept this on behalf of OET. Hello, I am Candace Lindu Davies of Minnesota Hands and Voices, and I have the great honor to present the Lifetime Achievement Awards to both Alan Parnes and Marion House Laden. As the parent of a deaf son, I am proud to present these awards to two extraordinary role models. The first is Marion House Laden. Marion got her BA at St. Benedict and her MA in Education and Guidance Counseling at River Falls, Wisconsin. She worked with the Department of Vocational, uh, Vocational Rehabilitation Services and retired this year after 30 years with St. Paul Public Schools as a social worker with the K through 12 program. She was my son's social worker and a great role model to him and a very good friend. She has served on many nonprofit agency and agency boards, served as the chair of the Commission of Deaf, Deaf Blind, and Hard of Hearing Minnesotans, Deaf and Hard of Hearing Services, uh, Regional Service Centers, Life Track Resources, the Minnesota Registry for Interpreters of the Deaf. She lobbied for the passage of the State Educational Interpreter Certification Law and she is a passionate advocate, and all who know her know that very well. She has instilled this passion in the students she served to advocate for themselves and for others. She has brought them to the Capitol every year. Marion sees the best in every student, every parent, and every colleague. Her colleague and friend, Mary, uh, Diana Van Dusen, says, she never gives up, but tries a new approach. She has lived her life fearlessly and courageously, never backing down because there is a disagreement or conflict. She fights for what is right without rancor or disrespect. She is a healer in the deaf and hard of hearing community. She has risen to a leadership position on every committee or board she has served. She plans to continue to advocate for greater access for children to mental health and chemical dependency treatment and support. Congratulations, Marian. Mary Hardnett, 
Thank you for all of your work in setting up today. The legislature hears us, and let me tell you, we can't give up. Thank you for this award. I love everyone. Love you all. I also have the honor to talk about Alan Parnes. Alan retired last year from the Department of Employment and Economic Development. He received his BA in Psychology from Gallaudet University and received his MA in Deafness Rehabilitation at New York University. He has worked for 11 years managing nonprofit human service agencies and 28 years as a rehabilitation counselor. He served as the Executive Director for the Center for Independent Living in Lansing, Michigan and of social services for the hearing impaired. He worked as a rehab counselor in Indiana, Ohio, and Minnesota. He has served on the national boards of telecommunications for the deaf, American Deafness and Rehabilitation Association, and the state chapters of ADARA in Minnesota, Ohio, and Michigan, and the state chapters of the National Association of the Deaf in Minnesota, and the Board of Governors and St. Rita School for the Deaf. He has received awards from the Federal Office of Civil Right, the Ohio and Michigan Association of the Deaf. He always empowered his clients and advocated internally for changes that could improve educational training and opportunities and systems change. Alan is currently volunteering close to full time to improve employment opportunities for people who are deaf deaf, blind, and hard of hearing through public policy. Congratulations, Alan. Thank you, Candace. Hello, everyone. Looking back on my life now, over 40 years of uh, service and giving back to the people, and just being of service to people, I have always enjoyed my life, enjoyed my work. That's, that's just what makes me so motivated. And I haven't stopped since I've been retired. I am involved with MCDHH and other organizations. Thank you so much for recognizing me for those years of service. Thank you, everyone. Their website. They have set an example for. 
for members of the association to provide access to 10% of the Minnesotans who are deaf, deafblind, and hard of hearing. They have a national reputation for inclusiveness and empowering their membership. We hope that the example that they set is followed by all nonprofits nationally. Accepting the awards are John Pratt, Executive Director of the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits, and Mike McEntee. I want to thank the commission and uh, also congratulate the other people being recognized here. Uh, nonprofits are a key vehicle to, for people to participate in public policy, but also to make their own lives better. Uh, we're proud of our members serving this community and pledge to continue making our information accessible. Thank you. I'm Mike McEntee with The Uptake. And somebody once asked me, why are you guys spending so much time typing? Uh, there are two very good reasons. One of them is personal. My stepfather is hard of hearing and nearly deaf. And when I heard he couldn't watch what was going on in the gubernatorial race, I made a personal commitment to make sure that he could understand everything that's being said. The second reason, though, I think is more important. And that's because a large, significant portion of our population does not have access to live information that's happening in political debates. And we need to change that. And we are dedicated to doing that. I am also going to remind you that if you want to see today's ceremony, you can go and watch it on the uptake. We're live streaming it now, and we'll be replaying it later. Thank you. I have made a, a serious omission. I needed to thank two people who were very, very instrumental in getting this done. Susan Miracle, who put in hundreds of hours, and Serene Sade, who organized our volunteers. Without them, this would not have happened.
Anita and I go way back. We've been friends forever. Recently, they did a presentation of the film called Signing On. Unfortunately, I haven't seen it, but I will. Anita promised me the next time that she was showing it that she would let me know so I could be there. There's a little bit of the video on the internet, and I did see that. It was very moving. It's about breast cancer survivors, which Anita is one. Their stories, their struggles, the problems with not understanding doctors, the beauty of American Sign Language and how it's so different from English. And we're really hoping that this video will really improve the health providers, the medical community, communication with the deaf community. And especially with the breast cancer survivors so that they can get the information they need in American Sign Language. Because the disparities are huge.
I had to be assertive. I had to go to those committees and testify in front of all of those legislators because we needed their support for the deaf blind community. We needed support service providers, SSPs. We needed SSPs to go out in the community and be successful. And over the years, our lives have improved with those services. Deaf blind people need more time. We need to get out. Otherwise, we're staying at home, we're isolated, we're disconnected. It has been such a pleasure to work with all the legislators, the senators, the representatives, and get their support. I so encourage every deaf blind person to come to the Capitol, tell your story. The legislators don't know. They don't know about deaf blind people. They may know more about deaf and hard of hearing people, but they don't know about deaf blind people. So thank you, thank you so much for coming. Thank you all. Commission, I would like, like to thank everyone for coming today. We all do better when we work together. We have diverse perspectives, but a common voice, and we'll work with hands together. I would like to thank the following people who have supported Deaf, Hard of Hearing, and Deaf Blind Day. Members of the Minnesota Association of Deaf Citizens, members of HLAA, members of the Minnesota Deaf Client Association, Minnesota Hands and Voices, all of the interpreters, Deaf Blind Technical Assistance Project, support service providers, CSD Minnesota, especially Jane Sullivan for coordinating interpreters for the planning and training. Lisa Richardson of Paradigm Reporting for providing cart services, today, Bob and Marilee Noel for looping the rotunda, thanks to plant management staff for setting up the rotunda, thanks to the MCDHH staff, Thank you. Andrew and Jamie, thanks to Wendy DeVore, Christine Marble, and Mary White from Employment Endeavors for providing refreshments. Thanks to all the commission members who serve and are here today. Thanks to our team leaders for the day, Deaf and Heart of Hearing Services Division for their assistive listening devices and support. The LCC for covering the cost of interpreters and SSPs for the visit to the Capitol today. And thank you all for the great advocacy work that you are doing. Our work isn't over. Keep calling, meeting with legislators through this session and responding to our alerts. I encourage all of you to take our online course, Making Your Case, that teaches you how to influence public policy on our website. So thank you again for coming today. Excuse me, this should be the close of the program, but uh, Nancy Myers and Barbara Allen got the time wrong. We want to recognize them for their wonderful contributions for making the magnificent film, Signing On, that Marion Hauslott and Anita Buell just spoke of. So um, I'm not sure, uh, is Barbara Allen here and could she come forward? I know Nancy Myers is here. Could you come forward, Nancy? And let's all give them the recognition they deserve for this magnificent, life-changing film. I'm sorry that uh, we got the time wrong. Our, our life has been a little chaotic since we finished the film and Barbara was desperately parking her car. Um, I, it, it was a wonderful film uh, to make and we are getting calls all over the country, including Toronto, Canada, that wants us to have a film up there. Um, it, it was, it's difficult, let's say, to work across cultures. And we are grateful for all of the work that Anita and her husband Tim did with us because he was there at the house also on the dining room table making 
a film that people tell us would have cost $2 million to make in the industry. And we did it with little or nothing. Um, but the Susan G. Komen Foundation, we're grateful for. Barbara, I'm on the podium. Walk in. <laughs> Come forward. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> only a hearing person could do that, right? So thank you for all coming to the event. We had over 700 people that have seen it. We're now making arrangements for Duluth, St. Cloud, Rochester, Mankato, Faribault, wherever. Uh, but I do have to confess that we are short by about $15,000. Um, so anytime anyone has any extra money they want to forward to us for the film, feel free. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming, go out, meet with your legislators, stay involved, and thank you, stand up and applaud yourselves for coming today and being an advocate. Fantastic. Keep going. Thank you.